plaintiff, Olivia Butler, dated the defendant, but she claims after he canceled their plans on Valentine's Day, Olivia saw pictures of him at a club with another woman posted on social media, and she has the pictures in court today. She's suing her ex for a flight, a hotel room, and loans. Defendant James Ramis insists he never cheated on Olivia. And on the Valentine's Day in question, he and Olivia weren't even together. He's countersuing for a down payment on a car and car repairs. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Your Honor, in November of 2019, I met James on, on an online dating site. Um, we started talking, communicating. You heard of the Crown Laws? No, Your Honor. You better be glad they passed, because I don't like your hair, and I dismissed the case. Well, I'm glad they passed it. No, I'm making the point. I love your hair. My, <laughs> my wife and my daughter, from time to time, wear their hair like that. And the... Uh, Crown laws, and that's why I'm stopping to say this, because many people discriminated in the workplace based on hair. Mm. And they have new legislation in several states, not all. Several states have crown laws where if they mention your hair and then you feel some kind, I don't know the exact elements of that are necessary, but I know people can't mess with you about no hair in the workplace anymore. That's what I'm saying. If you want to wear your locks, if you want to wear your crown like you have your braids and any other way you want to wear your hair. So crown laws, I could have thrown you out before. <laughs> I wouldn't have anyway. As I said, I, I like your hair. But folks, no one can discriminate against you in many states. So that should be a relief to many people who fear employers and others because of the way they wear their hair. All right, so you all met in November, and how did it go? Um, things worked out really great for the next six months. We talked on the phone. We used the um, dating site um, app to communicate. Um, and so in April of 2020, after about six months, since we were in the middle of the pandemic, we decided to meet in person. Um, and I felt comfortable enough based on That's the opposite. You started to meet in person since you're in the pandemic. It should have been the opposite. We <laughs> decided we stay on social media instead of meeting. But go ahead. Y'all wanted some comfort during that COVID. Right. And it was six months later, Your Honor. So right. we had been talking for about six months. And James is a very charming guy. At the time, he expressed that he wanted to at least try to meet all of the needs. You know, he did everything during that time frame to try to convince me to just trust him during that time. Your Honor, then in about July of 2020, July 4th, we actually took a trip to um, Mississippi. Um, prior to that, I guess in June, he started talking about marriage. So things were working out really, really well. Um, they were going very fast, moving very, very fast. He was talking about marriage. We went to my, see my parents in July. He asked my parents if he could marry me. Um, and my, my dad kind of smiled. My mom said, mm, um, I'm not too sure. There's something about that guy. You need to just wait a little bit and just consider what you're doing. Um, and so I'm very thankful for my mom for actually saying that. And you'll understand better as I get as we go through this story. Now, did he get around to you? I know sometimes you ask parents first. But did he get around to proposing to you? Well, he asked me, but it was just an ask. There was no ring involved. Okay. So he asked, okay. but no ring involved. Um, after we returned from that July trip, um, there were a number of, all of a sudden James did a disappearing act almost on me. So my son was in Mississippi. That was the time for us to get to know each other. We had talked about getting to know each other, but he did a disappearing act, not coming around, not being available. So during that time, I started suspecting that there was someone else, that there were other people that he may have been dealing with. And in December, on December 15th. What gave you that suspicion? Um, just the fact that prior to that, he was, I was seeing him almost every day. Okay. Um, he was coming around. Changing he was, pattern. Changing pattern resulted in me having some suspicion, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Then in December, on December 15th, I went to visit him. Um, he had been complaining that I would never come to visit him at his home, so I went to visit him at his home. And while I was there, another, there was a ring at the door, uh, another female came in, and after about 15 minutes of them going back and forth, he finally going introduced Going back and us. forth doing what? Talking and um, arguing. Arguing. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, Your Honor. Um, after they went back and forth arguing for about 15 minutes, he finally introduced us. He introduced her by name. He introduced me as his fiance at the time. Once she heard that, she became very surprised that he had a fiance. And she says to him, why is it that you have a fiance? I don't know about her and we're intimately involved. Um, again, in February, what my suspicion, say? sir. What did he say? He said, you know that we, I have somebody. You already know that you and I aren't together. Um, okay. And so he denied it. So give me some proof that he did. So he denied it um, for the next two months. Uh -huh. Then in February, um, because that was a really catastrophic to our relationship because the fact that she showed up and she felt very comfortable just walking through the house. Got it. Um, in February, by February, we had talked about Tell it. Me one more question about yes, that scenario. When he said, you know, we're not together. What does she say? She said, you know, we've been together. She actually been. said, we've been together. And been. she gave some dates like very close. And I asked a question. I asked him the question because I didn't know her. She didn't know me. So I don't, she doesn't owe me anything. Right. So I asked him, when was the last time you all were intimately involved? And his response to me was ask her since she's the one. And what talking. did she say? She said last week. There you go. All right. And did he say anything after he that? Said, I wasn't with her. I wasn't with her. He kept continuing right. to deny it. Good enough. Um, okay. And so from December to February, he tried to convince me that she was lying to mm -hmm. me. In February, on February 14th, Valentine's Day, we decided that we were gonna have a conversation to decide whether we were gonna try to continue our relationship or not. Um, so we said, we'll have dinner, we'll get together on February 14th. Um, he had a pattern of changing and canceling plans at the last minute. Again, on Valentine's Day, he canceled the plan, and this time- Did was, he? He did. Okay. He said he had to go to work. That's I've been a called sign. into work. That's a bad sign. It is. Go ahead. Um, I've been called you into work. You got a lot work. of visiting. <laughs> All right, go ahead. A lot of flowers to drop off, Doc. You just, what time do you go to sleep? I, I used to go about 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning where he was still dropping off flowers and he just couldn't get to you and sleep. He well, was trying to get to you at 3 with, his, with your flowers. <laughs> and he went to the first one at 8. She didn't let him out until nine. She made him eat. Then he came up with some, oh, I ain't feeling good. <laughs> so he Lee, I gotta go. Is he laughing? He not know the game. <laughs> then he gets over to the other lady's house. It took him a little travel time because she stayed across town. He keep them separate across town from each other. So he didn't get there at 10. She's shaking her head. She know I know too. So he get there at 10, the second one, right? Right. Hey, baby. Hi, I was expecting you for dinner. Oh, I'm sick, but you know, hey, ain't no sickness gonna stop me from seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> Here go these flowers in a glass of wine. <laughs> and they sit up there, and then, baby, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be bad company. Whew, get out of that. Gonna get his next set of flowers. <laughs> cross her off the list. Yeah, cross her off the list. <laughs> so that's what happened. Don't hold it against you. And I asked a question. I asked him the question because I didn't know her. She didn't know me. So I don't. She doesn't owe me anything. Right. So I asked him when was the last time you all were intimately involved. And his response to me was, "Ask her since she's the one." And what talking. did she say? She said last week. There you go. Defendant James Ramis is being sued by his ex-girlfriend, who claims she caught James cheating after another woman came to his home and confessed to their affair. So he changed plans on Valentine's Day. What did he say to change the reason? He had to go to work. Uh, <laughs> However, your honor, if you look at evidence on pages one to three, you will see that um, he was out on Valentine's Day living his best life with another female. And there are pictures to prove it on pages one to three. Pictures that he posted and pictures that the young lady- I don't see him. Posted. That's not him. I don't see him. You don't, Leave that hey, man alone. He ain't cheating on you. He ain't done nothing on you. Let me hear from you, sir. How you doing? I met Olivia. We had an awesome relationship. And the situation she's talking about, about Valentine's Day, we were still having disagreements about these loans and stuff, and we wasn't on really good terms. We wasn't even together on Valentine's Day for us in a relationship because Olivia decided to leave me alone after some other events happened in December. When the girl came to the house, I tried to explain. I told Olivia I didn't touch her, which I didn't. 
Then mess with her period. The girl had a son. That was, I see you about to get yourself. In now the now you the girl had a stuck with her story. You could even stuck with her story would have been better. <laughs> so you should have said, "See, Judge, you heard what she said." The woman and he had no date to give her. Because oh. if I if I'd have did it and Olivia was there and that girl would have came up, I'd have admitted if I was wrong. Because we had other situations going up to even a lead for me even talk to the other lady. I mean, the other lady never got intimate as an ex girlfriend from some years ago. From What's she doing in, over your house with no clothes on? She didn't have no, she wasn't at my house with no clothes on. She wasn't even supposed to show up. And Olivia showed up that day not telling me she was coming. She got there right when I got off work. I got in the shower. A few minutes after I got out of the shower, the other young lady knocks on the door and I let her in. Hey, I'm thinking, what y'all taking a shower together for? And, I, and, I, and I'm thinking nothing of it. I introduced What are you and the young lady taking a shower together no. for? Olivia was in the house while I was taking a shower. You just said you took a shower. No. We took a shower. No, I didn't even take a shower with her that day. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, the girl came in. I introduced Olivia. She say, big she say, well, Go ahead. well, uh, how you would how she, that's your woman. I didn't know nothing about her. And me and you did, me and you did, you, I can't say all the words she said in court, but she said you did this, 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 and this to me. I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> And she, st and she stuck to her story. And then late on that day, her and Olivia were still communicating or whatever. Olivia and her was on the phone. She comes back to my door at 11 o'clock at night. Your Olivia said, or the no, other No, the one. other girl. And, uh -huh. But they're on the phone and Olivia called, ain't that Jamie at your front door? So they start communicating. Coordinating. I, that's just coordinating. 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 And I feel like that's what caused me and Olivia's relationship to go back. And we had an awesome relationship. And I tried to explain to Olivia, I didn't mess with that lady because I wanted me and Olivia's relationship. Since then, me and Olivia, before a couple of weeks ago, I was calling her, checking on Olivia. Can we please fix our stuff? Can we please fix our stuff? So, what you have to do Valentine's night? Valentine's Day night, I was bored. I went out on a date. Went to the I went to the House of Soul on Washington. You say you Street. lied to and said you had to work. I did work that day, that morning. And I got off at six o'clock. See, that's when she wanted to be with you after six. She ain't going to no club. Dinner, a romantic dinner. You ever heard of that? Yeah, I heard of it. I messed up, but we was having problems, um, <laughs> Mister uh, Your Honor, and I just didn't go over there. Okay, <laughs> I didn't go over there. <laughs> we was having problems, so I didn't go over there. <laughs> Cause, Cause, when she gets angry, it, it's a whole different ball game. So I, you, I get scared of Olivia sometimes. So I didn't go over there that night. I didn't think it was safe. You get scared of her why? Cause she a gangster. Oh well, she a Mississippi gangster. Judgment for Olivia. Didn't <laughs> get me messed up. Judgment yeah, for Olivia. I wasn't going over there. <laughs> what part of Mississippi gangster is she? I'm from Silver Creek, Mississippi, Your Honor. What is that near? Jackson? It's near, it's about 70 miles southeast of Jackson. Okay, got it. All right, tell me about the loans you're suing them about, or the flight in the hotel and the loans. So, Your Honor, in about May of 2020, um, you're James, still bothering with him. Go I'm ahead. still bothering with him, yes. Um, James told me that he had to go to Valdosta, Georgia to sell some land that he owned there. Um, however, he did not have the monies for him to get his flight, his hotel, and his car. He needed to borrow the money, um, and he would get it back to me as soon as the land sold. And we all know three days. It was land. Well, yes, three days. Yeah, I two used weeks to sell the money. Detroit River <laughs> <laughs> when I was conning women back in the day. Baby, I got to leave. <laughs> and I got to. I got to sell Detroit River. Got a man bidding on it. Okay, well, I need a few hundred dollars just so I can get a suit and look good. So, cause he ain't gonna buy the river from me if I don't look right. <laughs> <laughs> so this was land, okay. It's land. Land, not river, land. All right, at least he gave you land game. He got a lot of visiting. <laughs> All right, go ahead. A lot of flowers to drop off, Doc. You just, what time you go to sleep? I, I used to go about two in the morning. Two in the morning, where well, he was still dropping off flowers that he just couldn't get to you in sleep. He was trying to get to you at three with, his, with your flowers. Defendant James Ramis is being sued by his ex-girlfriend, who claims she caught James cheating after another woman came to his home and confessed to their affair. So what happened? <laughs> so, Your Honor, he gets there, he comes back, he never pays me. And what then, does he say about this big land deal? That's the, what I want to hear about. The, he said that he closed um, the following week. He then said, oh, there's a water bill 
and I'm using air quotes, mm -hmm. that has to be paid before they can finalize and get me my money. Oh, so there was more money that he needed to good. borrow. He's pretty good. Um, and all of that is listed there. Um, and then from June to December, there were multiple things that he needed monies for. Um, and I think he knew how to tug at my what? heart. So he told me that on um, September 10th, that his youngest son's mother had died and that after his son's mother died, he needed to get a place for he and his youngest son to live so that he could provide covering and housing for his son. Um, then he says, oh, well, they're coming out and they're going to uh, inspect the house and I have to have a refrigerator and a stove. Um, so the house that he rented, um, I helped him to get the monies for the down payment. I helped him. Um, the next month, I was like, you need to make sure you have the money. The next month, he didn't have the money for his rent. Then he He's supposedly getting his son. He needs a stove and this refrigerator. I help him get that. And then, Your Honor, the son has never stayed in this house. But because he knows that children are my heart, he used that. Now, how about the passing of the son's mother? I'm not sure that she's dead, Your Honor. I don't, I don't trust that she is truly dead. Because if she was, why would the biological father not have the child? My son lives in my house right now, and I say this on national TV. And me and, and Olivia didn't trust that stuff because of that stuff with that girl. I heard Olivia's feelings with that stuff with that other woman that I never slept with. And that's the only reason I feel what like- What about repayment of all these loans? Repayment of these debts, I agreed to $2,769 of the debts because I bought her a stuck couple of them things she did on that debt list. She did it because we had an account together and she took care of the account because it had her name on it because of her position at her job, which I had overdraft protection on the account. And she paid it because she said she couldn't have nothing on that on her record for the things. So I never asked her to pay the 480 some dollars on this list for them overdraft fees. She did that because the account had both our names. I see on. a promissory note on the list of uh, evidence. So yeah. uh, you have a note where you had him sign it, ma'am, uh, agreeing to repay. Yes, Your Honor. And so why are you suing for more than the amount that he uh, agreed to pay? Yes, sir. That was a promissory note for the $900 for the house. Mm -hmm. for the rents on the house. Him how much more after that? After that date. So everything after the promissory uh -huh. note, Your Honor? Because otherwise you should have put it in here. Oh, after that date, the only thing that I um, gave him was for the refrigerator and the stove after that. And he everything, was to repay you? Every bit of Your Honor. Why didn't you add that to the, or amend the uh, promissory note? Um, because he was actually at his house, which is about an hour away, and so he needed to go pick How those devices How much you say you up. owe, sir? $2,769. $2,769. And, and the only reason I haven't paid on it is because we had another transaction we did, which I paid a down payment on a 2016 Jeep, paid for some repairs other than and the we're going to get to that. That's your counterclaim for uh, $3,850. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my counterclaim for it, she put a Jeep on July 14th, and her name, because my credit was not good enough to get it. That said, property she's talking about in Valdosta, Georgia, they was trying to give me 800,000 for it. It's worth 14 or $15 million. She said herself at the they time. They tried to give me 1.2 and she, and she, for the Detroit River. Then, 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 <laughs> and then, I'm like you, I wouldn't and, take it either. And then, then she, said, no one she said, for she said, baby, River? she said, baby, I want to take that 800000 I was insulted. Weren't you insulted oh, when they offered you 800000 Yeah, I was insulted, but I was, I was insulted. And then it came to a point she signed for my Jeep. I was paying the payments. And before the grace period, well, she don't agree with grace periods. Two days when after this incident happened with that girl, she came, I, she said, well, ask me a question about that situation. She didn't like the answer I gave her. So she said, well, I'm coming to get your car. She came and got my car, but I had just paid my car payment two days before that tour. And I paid a down payment. How much is your down payment? Down payment was $2,000. And the repairs. And I had to fix a spindle, not counting on what was covered under warranty, right. was $1,700. All right, I'll get back to her on, and we'll ask her about that. He says you breached and, the and, contract. And, and, and the, 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 we had a verbal agreement. You need to be quiet. Oh, all right. <laughs> Discuss, ma'am, the car. So, Your Honor, on um, June 15th, we did go in and um, start looking. At, he found a car. He said he was going to get the, a car after he got this land money. Um, you will see on there, Your Honor, that I am saying that he contradicted himself. The down payment on this car was only $1,000. That's on page 36 of this evidence. 
it is at one thousand dollars that he actually um, paid down on the car with the agreement and understanding that he would actually um, keep up the payments on a monthly basis, ensure that the payments were made and the insurance claims were made. You have the car. You took it back. I took it back because what it was three months behind. What reason did you take it back? It went out because he had missed the August payment. He had missed November did payment. Did He had missed there December wasn't, payment. Did you miss back. any payment? No. Did she did there at 10, the second one, right? Right. Hey, babe. Hi, I was expecting you for dinner. Oh, I'm sick, but you know, hey, ain't no sickness gonna stop me from seeing you. <laughs> Defendant James Ramis is being sued by his ex-girlfriend, who claims she caught James cheating after another woman came to his home and confessed to their affair. That was illegal repossession because you got mad about him and this girl, so you take the car back, you breach the contract you have with him. How much you say you owe, sir? That's all you're getting, ma'am. $2,769, and on the payment of your car is how much? Sir, are you asking for the down payment? Was two thousand? She said it was a thousand. You have I'm a asking for, I'm, You have evidence up to two thousand. No, nah, I just. All I'm right, just, very good. Right. One thousand eight hundred and fifty for car repairs. Do you have that? No, she has. All right, that. all you're getting is the one thousand. She acknowledges. Have a good day. That's your judgment. I can't believe you said my payment was three months behind when you got it, Olivia. And that's not true. You just got my payment the day before you came and took the car. And I don't have no problem with taking care of what I owe you. But when you took that car from me, that took money out of my pocket, too. You did this stuff because you was hurt over that stuff with Jamie. I never did that stuff with Jamie. I'm staying on national TV and I stayed in front of Jesus. I never touched that girl in the first place. He knows that he's lying. He made multiple promises that he was going to bring me the money, not only for that, but for other things that he had borrowed from me. And now he's here on national television asking for the money back for this car. I never wanted a Jeep. I didn't ask for it. You've been I was driving it like it's yours. I, I'm driving it like it's mine because it's in my name.